Well, I found this drama. It was published by Homiletics Magazine, Zacchaeus at the IRS. And, and it reminded me of something the covenant players might do. So, you know, they come without a lot of staging and props. So they tell you, imagine you're not in church. Imagine you're in an office building, you know, with all the cubicles and desks. And, and you're close enough to one of the desks, you can overhear one side of a telephone conversation. Are you there? Well, let's pick up the scene. Hello, you've reached the Telephone Assistance Center of the IRS, Israel Re Revenue Service. My name is Zacchaeus. How may I assist you today? Yes, that's right, Zacchaeus. The name means pure and innocent. I understand your laughter, ma'am. I really do. I know most people don't think of IRS agents as pure and innocent. So where are you calling from? Jericho. Excellent. Great place. Lots of history. Occupied by our ancestors when they crossed the Jordan River and entered the Promised Land. I live there too, you know. Yes, ma'am. I am a Jew, just like you. No, I'm not a dirty, rotten Roman. Yes, you're right. I work for the Romans, but I'm still a Jew. The Romans took Jericho 90 years ago without much resistance. Like we were supposed to do something against the most powerful army in the world. They can pretty much march in and take whatever they want. No, you're not listening. I'm not defending Rome. I'm reviewing history. General Mark Anthony had an estate here, and he liked it so much he gave it to Cleopatra. And after the two of them committed suicide, Augustus gave the estate to Herod. Well, and here we are. No, ma'am, I'm not a fan of Herod. I remember that he was so jealous of his brother-in-law, he had him drowned in a pool right here in Jericho. Yes, ma'am. May I put you on hold? I don't know why I get so much criticism from my own people. I do my best to keep the Ten Commandments. It's not like I've murdered anyone. Some people think that I steal, but tax collecting is a tricky business. I know for a fact that many of my neighbors cheat on their taxes. I think the reason I get so much criticism is I'm the chief tax collector and I'm rich. I oversee all the tax collections in this area. So I have a team of people who collect taxes, tolls, and tariffs from Jews, my people. Someone's got to do it. Would they prefer a Roman to collect taxes from them? The system is open to abuse, I know. People like me are just assumed to be dishonest. And most of all, we're hated because we're cooperating with Rome. But look, I have to make a living. Ma'am, I'm back now. How can I help you? Yes, I can assist you with that. I'm good with numbers so I can calculate your tax. When do you need it completed? Maybe never, you say? Why is that? Oh, I see. You don't think you're going to have to pay the taxes to Rome because Jesus has come. Yes, I've heard they're calling him the son of David. They hope that he will lead an army like a new sort of King David and drive the Romans out. But ma'am, I have to be honest with you. I think that's a stretch. I've seen the strength and the brutality of the Roman army. Jesus and his Jewish army, 
Well, they would not have a chance. No, ma'am. I'm not on the side of Rome. I'm just more interested in Jesus as a religious leader. He healed the servant of the Roman centurion. He forgave a sinful woman. He healed a boy with a demon. Best of all, I've heard that he's a friend to tax collectors and sinners, and I, that's exactly what I need. Yes, ma'am. Jesus is a friend of the outcast, and that is good news. I hear what you're saying. But do you have a minute? I'd like to tell you about what happened to me. Yesterday, I looked out my window and I saw a crowd headed for town. I joined them and, and asked, hey, what's going on? Oh, he ignored me knowing who I was. Instead, he turned and, and, and talked to a friend and said, I hear that Jesus has just healed a blind beggar. Can you believe it? You know the guy I'm talking about, that disgusting beggar who always sits just outside of town? People are saying that he is now following Jesus into Jericho with a spring in his step. Oh, I got excited when I heard this. Jesus had healed a man who was reviled as any tax collector. But as we approached the edge of Edge of town, my heart sank. The sides of the road were, were packed with people five deep. I began to work my way along the edge of the crowd. I couldn't see a thing, even if I hopped up and down. Although I may sound tall on the phone, I'm only four foot eleven inches. You say I don't sound tall on the phone? Anyway, I knew I needed a plan, so I, I looked where Jesus would probably enter Jericho, and, and I ran ahead and I climbed a sycamore tree with large, low branches, perfect for climbing. I knew people would laugh at me. Yet, you know, it's undignified for a grown man to run. Running's for, for kids. And a man of importance would never climb a tree. It's humiliating, but I didn't care. I wanted to see Jesus. And the crowd continued to swell. And I was glad that I had my vantage point in the tree. I could see over the heads of everyone along the road, even the men and women who were looking up at me and laughing. I heard one of them say, hey, look at Zacchaeus up in the tree. He may be rich. But he looks like an idiot. <laughs> yes, you're right. I probably did look like an idiot. But then Jesus and his entourage appeared. I'd never seen Jesus before, but immediately I picked him out of the middle of his disciples. They moved quickly with a sense of urgency, and the crowd parted like the Red Sea as they passed through town on their way to Jerusalem. As Jesus reached the sycamore tree, he turned his head and he looked straight into my eyes. I was so shocked, I almost locked my grip on the tree and, 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 and fell. And then he said, Zacchaeus, hurry up and come down, for I must stay at your house today. I tell you, I didn't see that coming. The crowd was silent. People looked at Jesus and they looked at me back and forth, wondering what in the world he was doing. Why was Jesus talking to someone with so little or no social standing? I scrambled down the tree, almost flipping upside down when my robe caught on a branch. But somehow I managed to reach the ground safely. I pushed myself through the crowd until I found Jesus. He was taller than I am, but not by much. I brushed the, the leaves off my clothing. I threw open my arms to him saying, welcome, 
a thousand welcomes. I was so honored that the great Jesus wanted to stay with me. The crowd was still stunned. They were no longer silent. They knew Jesus was breaking the code of purity by going to the house of an IRS agent. In addition, he was honoring a man who just humiliated himself by, by running and climbing a tree. People began to grumble and say, he's gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner? For shame, for shame. Jesus said nothing, but just continued to look at me as, as though I were the only person in the crowd. I'd never seen such a loving gaze. Silence was awkward. So I broke it by saying, look, half my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have to frauded anyone of anything, I will pay it back four times as much. Because Jesus had honored me with his presence, I, I felt a need to make amends for past wrongs. I volunteered to pay people back fourfold. And Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. I could hardly believe it. <coughs> Jesus had restored my good status by calling me a son of Abraham? He'd broken through my isolation by seeking me out and saving me? As long as I live, I'll never be able to do anything to pay him back. But I'm going to try each and every day, and that is why I want to help you, ma'am. I want to do your taxes right. No, ma'am, I'm not trying to be a hero. Jesus is the hero because he reached out to me and made me his friend Wherever you are in loneliness and isolation, he'll do the same for you. All you, where can you find Jesus? Well, Jesus is just about everywhere. He'll probably find you. Thing is, when you want to find Jesus, that sort of moment, that's the sort of moment you'll find him. It's like what God said through the prophets. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. That's in Jeremiah 29, 13 and 14. So all you have to do is take a risk, a risk of moving toward him. He'll call you his friend. I guarantee you that you will be thankful that he breaks through your loneliness and you'll want to spend the rest of your life wanting him, wanting to make him proud that he knows you. If this call has been helpful to you, please stay on the line for a short survey. <laughs> this is Zacchaeus at the IRS.